Chapter 8 Dragging the Dead They all turned and looked at the pile of soggy corpses. Sebastian stood with his mouth open, his eyes frowning, his eyebrows frowning. Jonathan had already thought that through. The freezer, he said. Otherwise they'll... He stopped and grimaced, then shrugged. We have to put them in the freezer. Sebastian nodded at him. That makes sense, he said. The freezer's a long ways away, Tony said. Sebastian raised his eyebrows at him. Then we better get started. Sebastian did the math of eight bodies and sixteen boys and assigned each body to two boys. None of the pairs could get their body more than a few feet before dropping it with a stomach-twisting meaty splash in a puddle, though. Dead bodies are heavy, it turns out. When they're wearing rain-drenched coats and wool trousers, they're really heavy. And when they're rain-soaked bodies of men being carried by a bunch of kids who don't even really want to be touch them, they're almost impossibly heavy. Okay, Sebastian burked, gasping for breath and still holding Mr. Warwick's feet in his, ha in his hands. Two trips, four people per body, someone take one of these legs. The bodies were still heavy, but in teams of four, they at least managed to drag them toward the door. It was tough going, though. Curses and accusations echoed around the courtyard. Come on, you're only pretending to hold that arm. Lift higher, it's hard to pull when his head's dragging like that. I am trying, Jason, his ankle is just too slippery. No, not by the elbow, dummy. Grab under the armpits like this. Gross, his tongue touched me. But step by step, they got the bodies out of the courtyard and through the door and down the dark hallway and into the room where they'd eaten breakfast. The groups were spread out by then, depending on how big a body they'd gotten stuck with. Jonathan was with Colin, Miguel, and the kid named David. They unfortunately had ended up with the Admiral, and they were at the very end of the morbid, sweating, swearing parade. Dang, man, Miguel panted, wrestling with a leg that was slippery with rain. Why'd I get stuck with three of the littlest guys? David, who was trying to get a good grip on the Admiral's right arm, shot him a look. I ain't no weakling. Nah, nah, you know what I mean, Miguel said quickly. We all know you tough, that's why you're here, right? For being all tough and stuff and, like, almost killing some guy or something. Jonathan glanced nervously at David, but David, David just rolled his eyes. No, just for fighting. Yeah, Miguel said, but, like, a lot of fighting, right? David shrugged. They struggled for a few more steps in silence, but then he spoke again. His quiet voice, a rush of, a rush of frustration. I'm the only Japanese kid at my school, right? And every day, every day, they make fun of me. They push, they throw things, whisper things. And so, yes, I fight back, so I get lots of practice, right? So after a while, I start to win. And what's wrong with that? So some, some moron starts up again and ends up with a broken jaw and a concussion. I'm supposed to be sorry? The judge says, David bitterly slipped into a deep adult voice. All these terrible fights, all these stitches and broken noses, and you are the common denominator me. I laughed at the judge because from where I was sitting, the common denominator was all those stupid white boys. Miguel dropped the admiral's leg and straightened up to catch his breath. Sure, man, he said. Whatever you say, you're on top. You're the numerator, man. Just remember I ain't white next time you start swinging, okay, champ? David scowled. What about you? He asked. What are you in for? Miguel shrugged. Eh, truancy. They're not, like, super great at showing up to school, you know? My folks chose to send me here to fix my attitude. Can you believe that? A grin spread across his face. But look at me now, choosing to stay here. When we could go home, I'm reformed. He looked around at them, waiting for a laugh, but they were all too tired and out of breath. Jonathan gave him a little smile and wiped the sweat from his forehead. What about you, newbie? Miguel asked. What'd you do to get yourself sent here? Jonathan's smile flickered away. His eyes dropped away from Miguel's. The Admiral was looking up at him, his foul mouth open and his dead eyes gaping. Come on, Jonathan said. Let's get this over with. This guy ain't getting any lighter. The boys stooped and regained their holds and hoisted the Admiral up with a chorus of grunts and curses. This is absolutely insane, Colm complained under his breath, changing his grip around the Admiral's left armpit. We should have told right away. 
I'd keep that to yourself, Jonathan murmured, looking up the hallway. I think Sebastian will actually kick your butt if you keep talking like that. Jonathan was holding the Admiral's other limp arm and dragging him backward. Walter and David each had a leg. Sebastian, this was all your idea, Jonathan. Jonathan frowned and cleared his throat. The Admiral's head rocked from side to side as they walked, looking back and forth from him to Colin like he was listening to the conversation. Jonathan tried to avoid the Admiral's glassy, staring eyes. Yeah, well, I was right. I didn't want to go home. The Admiral's head flopped over to Colin. Well, some of us do. The Admiral's head flopped back to Jonathan. Jonathan didn't know what to say. He looked away from the Admiral's accusing eyes. It's just for a few days, Colin, he said through gritted teeth. His fingers were burning from the Admiral's weight. Just relax. It'll be fun. The Admiral's corpse looked back to Colin. His tongue was starting to stick out. Fun? With him in charge? He'll be worse than the Admiral. Colin looked down at the Admiral's empty stare. No offense. Sebastian's not in charge, Jonathan assured him. No one is. It's just all of us. He's not taking over. Colin looked up into Jonathan's eyes and frowned his little frown. Just wait and see. He shook his head. The inmates are running the asylum. The inmates are running the asylum? What does that mean? Colin shrugged. It's just a saying. Who says it? People. When do they say it? The Admiral's head rocked back over to look at Jonathan. Colin sighed and put his shoulder under the Admiral's un uncooperative arm. When everything starts to go wrong. By then, some of the boys had already made it to the freezer and dropped their bodies off. They walked out of the kitchen, red-faced and sweaty. Sebastian was among them. Listen up, he called out, panting. Once you get both your bodies put away, we're going to meet at the big table. We need to decide some stuff. And hurry up. Colin shot Jonathan a meaningful look that he pretended not to see. Finally, they got the Admiral's bloated body to the freezer. Their breath puffed in frosty clouds as they dragged and pushed him up onto the pile of corpses. Jonathan was the last to leave. He slipped gratefully out of the freezer, but groaned when the door hit the Admiral's jutting boot, six inches shy of closing. Colin and the others were already out the freezer door and into the kitchen, heading back for the next corpse. He kicked at the Admiral's boot, but his leg was stiff and the boot wouldn't budge. He sighed and looked over his shoulder and reluctantly walked back into the freezer. He, got, he grabbed the Admiral but under both armpits and heaved, trying to twist him over and higher up on the pile of bodies. As he did so, he heard a metallic clanging and looked down. A key had fallen out of the Admiral's jacket pocket. It was a big key, rusty and old-fashioned. Jonathan glanced around and shivered. He picked up the key and slipped it into his pocket, then gave the Admiral one last push to clear the door and walked out to rejoin the rest of the boys.